Okay, so we know now to expand the dynamic range of your images, we either need to, one, purchase a better DSLR that can capture a broader dynamic range, not a very good option, or two, combine multiple exposures at different brightness levels to expand the dynamic range. This is the option that we're gonna go with because, well, that's the sensible solution here. <laughs> All right, but combining multiple exposures sounds like a rather complex task, but I'm here to tell you it's actually not. In fact, most cameras, really any new modern DSLR, is gonna have this function built in and it's referred to as auto exposure bracketing or AEB. The auto exposure bracketing or AEB function allows us to tell our cameras to shoot in groups of images, say three images, five images, seven images. Each one of these groups and each one of the images inside of that group is gonna differ by a specific exposure value spacing that we will define ourselves. What exactly does this mean? Well, the most common exposure value spacing and bracketing sequence that we're gonna be using is what we refer to as a three frame, two stop bracketed sequence. This means that we'll be taking three shots. So basically there'll be a zero shot and we're gonna space it out by two stops on each side. So we're taking three images. Here is the median shot at zero. And then we're gonna take one that's two stops darker and one that is two stops brighter. This is the most common bracketed sequence that we're gonna set up, but you can also set up more complex bracketed sequences where you're doing say five frames. And each of those frames is gonna be separated by one stop or by two stops, or even a seven frame uh, bracketed sequence with each exposure uh, spaced at one stop. Now every DSLR camera will work a bit different as far as the controls and options available to you with auto exposure bracketing or AEB. But the thing is that we're gonna allow the auto exposure bracketing to basically take all the shots in our HDR sequence for us. So essentially we don't have to worry about taking all those shots, we just dial in the correct settings, let the camera's auto exposure bracketing function do the rest for you. Of course, to know all of the functions and features that your camera offers in regards to AEB, we do recommend that you actually consult your camera manual. Now it is possible to shoot a bracketed sequence manually, basically where you are dialing in the exact exposure adjustments from image to image. And if you don't have auto exposure bracketing available, then this is really your only option and you just need to get very quick at doing this. But if you do have AEB available in your camera, then that is the option that you absolutely should use. And here's the reason. If we were to shoot, say, a three frame, two stop bracketed sequence with our cameras, not factoring in the shutter time, so not factoring in how long the shutter is actually open, let's say our camera has a frame rate of six frames per second. Well, that means that the camera is going to take all three of those shots in exactly half a second. Now, just imagine how long it would take you to basically take three shots and adjust the exposure two stops within each shot. It's going to take even the most experienced person at least five to eight seconds to basically snap each photo while dialing the settings in between. Now, what happens if there's an object moving through that scene? Well, with the camera controlling the shots, then basically that object has less time to move as opposed to when we're controlling the bracketing sequence. When we're controlling the bracketing sequence, objects are gonna move much more. We can also introduce basically motion into the camera by accidentally shaking the camera when we're pressing the shutter. A lot of things can go wrong which are basically gonna impact the overall quality that we get from our image. We might end up with ghosting, which we're gonna talk about later. We might just end up with unsharp images. Either way, shooting manual when we don't need to is gonna introduce a lot of problems and kind of give a greater chance of getting a lot of strange and unwanted artifacts in the actual HDR processing. So bottom line is if you have AEB in your camera, use it. There's no reason to dial it in manually. Now, some cameras, more advanced DSLRs and newer DSLRs are coming out with basically HDR functions. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later in this DVD, but don't count that out yet. All right, so let's move on to the next video.